Welcome to the Business Spotlight, where today the spotlight is shining on the wonderful Joyce from Joyce Connor Makeup. Hey, Joyce, and welcome to the Spotlight. Hi, now. Thanks for having me today. I'm so excited to have you here. This is going to be great. Now, for everybody that doesn't know you yet, Joyce, tell us a bit more about you. How long have you been in business? Who are you? What do you do? Tell, tell us a bit more. So I'm Joyce Connor and I am a makeup artist. This is my 26th year in business. I'm a freelance professional, so I do all kinds of makeup. I give advice, I teach makeup, I do makeup for all kinds of occasions. Um, and in the last 10 years, my work has more geared towards the corporate world. So anyone having headshots, any uh, business forums, uh, anything that uh, I've noticed that business events are heavily going hybrid now. So I will do for the presenters the makeup and then they can um, broadcast their events all over the world. So instead of having four or 500 attendees, they've got 10,000 attendees. And it, it's, it's massively amazing. And I, I absolutely love it. At the moment, I'm just working by myself and I subcontract bigger jobs and recruit other makeup artists to give me a hand. OK, so 26 years in business. I mean, that is amazing. You obviously started when you were four. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> just, just say yes to that one. It's fine. Um, gosh, you, so you've got lo loads, of, loads of experience, loads of learnings, which we'll delve into in, in a minute. But what so take me back sort of 26 years ago like what made you start out by yourself why not get a job um because I think a, a friend so I'd gone to live in New York that's where it all started okay. I knew nothing about makeup I didn't wear makeup I hadn't got a clue and I went to live in New York with my mum who was living there at the time and I got my makeup done and I thought oh I like this so I went to another counter and got my makeup done. And then there in every day, I was virtually at a different counter. And that experience of that feel good, the way it made me feel, it made me start thinking, I want to do this. I want to give other people that good feeling. Nice. So, um, yeah, I came back to the UK. I've lived out there for six months. I've had enough of American life. It was freezing cold in winter and I wanted um, back to the UK winter. I came home and this course was advertised in beauty and makeup. And I thought that is definitely for me. Yeah. Signed up. And when I left, I thought, oh, what shall I do? And my friend said, you've got to set up a business. And I thought, oh. I can't, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I've never been self-employed. I've always been employed and you know, and my first, I, I remember marketing my business. I rented a room at the local leisure center and I was doing beauty as well. So I was doing facials and waxing and things like that. And nobody came on my first day. Oh. I was heartbroken, but it then grew. It grew and grew and grew. Um, I was so busy. Word of mouth got out. And it's, let's say, I've, I've not looked back since. Um, but self-belief, you know, I have those days where I didn't believe I could do it. Yep. I didn't believe I was good enough. And then, you you know, the imposter syndrome creeps in when someone says, oh, my God, you're doing so well. And I think, actually, I'm not, I'm not. And... Uh, the, the one, what my first year, my sister said, you know, how much money did you make? And I went, well, my, you know, but, you know bearing in mind 26 years ago, my turnover was 30,000. And my sister told my whole family, Joyce has got 30,000 pounds, not understanding yeah, the yeah. difference between turnover and profit. I mean, my profit was probably about 5,000, but, you know, they... They saw that as now yeah, yeah, you're yeah. you're the rich person in the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're think, sitting there thinking, but I'm not. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So over these 26 years, what have been some of the biggest challenges? Oh, the, the biggest challenge, um, I think, is just keeping up with updated all the time because you have to fit in education. Education is so important. Things are changing constantly. Yeah. 
people are now ingredient savvy and they want to know about, oh, what's this ingredient or what's that product? So on top of working, I'm constantly researching. So, you know, and, and trying to retain that knowledge, which is the yeah. way. And also to make decisions based on, I, I would imagine, based on what's relevant or what sits with, within the values of your business, I take yeah, it. Yeah, and also yeah. how to speak to people, because now what's happening is even the men are wearing makeup on screen. So you think if you take the average man off the street who has never worn makeup in their life and suddenly they're presenting a corporate event yep. and they've been told you have to wear makeup well it's really difficult so I have to I had to learn how to speak to a guy and say do you know what we're only going to do this or this and don't worry I've got some cleansing we can take it off afterwards before you go home so nobody will know you're wearing it yeah yeah it's that kind of stuff but equally there are some women who don't want to wear any makeup but it's purely for film purpose only. And that's, that's the difference is it, it's learning communication. The communication has changed. I've had to learn how to say, you know, you can't suddenly be, uh, you can't be aggressive. You have to be gentle. You have to persuade people very gently. <laughs> So, so where do you learn this communication? Like what, what I've been over the years, what are your, and not just maybe communication, but what have been some of your ways of how do you learn as a business owner? Where, where do you find that information? Um, a lot of mine is going to networking, networking events, going to other um, uh, business forums, going to educational events, because a lot of educational events also include role play. Yeah. And that's the good thing is that the role play helps you to use the right wording and body language. I learned a lot about body language too. Um, but, but also watching people, watching on YouTube or on the internet, how people present themselves, you know, yeah. how they speak, how do they look, you know, are they being aggressive or are they holding back and being yeah. quite quite nice that kind of stuff oh love that so there's been some challenges I take you know we've, we've kind of gone there already and, and some changes more than anything else as well what about some of the wins what have been your biggest wins over your 26 years oh my biggest wins um I guess uh when out of the blue so one of the jobs when, when I get a job with a celebrity that I absolutely love, who I can't discuss because I've Don't signed do this to me, Joy. Don't. Sorry. So those sorts of things, when you work with somebody you admire and being around that um, and supporting other people or people supporting me, I think those are wins. It's not financial. It's not about anything like that, but also winning awards are so important even though I downplay them or being in the media mm. so um a few years ago there was a a, a tv sh show it was a cake shop in Brighton called Chocky Wocky Doodah okay. and they I wrote a small script I'm a woman of many talents I wrote a small script and I asked Chocky Wocky Doodah if they'd make the cake for my little story and they said, yes. And then, and then they said, would you be okay with us filming it for our TV show? So I did, the, I did this, wrote this script, did a photo shoot, and they came and filmed it. And it was on TV. I think that is my biggest win yet. I absolutely love that. I can't believe I missed that episode. I'm going to have to go back now and watch yeah. that. <laughs> how, over the years, how do you celebrate your wins? Uh, with champagne <laughs> a woman after my own heart I love yeah, it yeah. So, um, I celebrate I, I think now that we have social media you know because mm. when you think when I started mm. you had to work a lot harder there wasn't an, there wasn't the internet and if you did have it was 
the slow dial-up kind. Uh, so people didn't use the internet. There was no social media or anything like that. And so it was, it's, it's grafting, put the hours in. There's no nine to five in self-employment. It's, it's a, you work, you're at work all the time. And if you work at home, you're doubly at work all the time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's the bit that people don't see, is it? Yeah. When, when you're self-employed, the extra hours that you work it isn't just the nine to five showing up doing what you need to do with clients or at events, but it's everything else that comes with it. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, what I was saying about and seeing your competitors, not as competition, mm. but your but your equals, because we all learn from each other. And we, you're the people who you deem as a competitor, they're not really. There's enough for everybody. We just have to work it. But you just have to have your USP. Your unique selling point is the most important thing, what's different about you and what makes you stand out from everybody else. And I love that you bring that up. So what, why, why you? Like, what, where are you different to any of the other makeup artists? What do you do really well? I do really well a very natural makeup. I don't cake it on. And that's the first thing people put in an email. Yeah. Hi, I'd love to book you because all of your work looks very natural. So nice. people still look like themselves and they love that. Um, secondly... I can work on anyone, male, female, young, old, whatever you are, that's my, that's my thing. And that's what makes me unique. Plus my knowledge of skin and, and how it works. So um, I think that makes me stand out from everyone. And you know, one size doesn't fit all. Whereas you see a lot of makeup and it's, you know, the thick eyebrows and really heavily, put on the face and and most women don't want that you you know you know this because we've had this conversation before but I never wear any makeup so some some of these trends I see developing I go what the yeah <laughs> yeah anyway anyway um what still keeps you awake at night as a business owner um forecasting what's 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 happening next month okay i i'm such a planner i never used to be okay. but i am a planner and i'd like to know what's happening three months down the line when i don't know what's happening next month it stresses me out yeah yeah well where, where or how did that change so if you didn't used to plan and now you do where did that change um, I did an action coach course, actually. <laughs> not, my, not one of mine, but I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. That's good. Well done. Yeah, I did. And it, it was all about time um, and how to manage your time and how to plan ahead. And honestly, it changed my life. That's right. I didn't even know you were going to say this. So I absolutely love that. Thank you very much. OK, and that's kind of why I wanted to ask, because I think naturally most people don't plan, especially when you start a business. So the fact that you said, now I really want that, I kind of wanted to understand what made the difference. So that's yeah. interesting. Yes, right. it, honestly, the, I, if, if you're doing it now, I highly recommend people go to you and oh. do it because it, it's I'm serious. It really changed my way of thinking about time because I was used to rush around from this to this to this, but you've got to plan out your time. So I'm going to give two hours to this and one yeah. hour to that and half an hour to that. It makes all the difference. And you achieve three times as much. Love that one. Absolutely love that one. So actually, my next question was all going to be about looking forward. So it nicely links in with this conversation. Yes. What, where is your industry going in the next five years? What, what are you anticipating? So I think um, people, uh, luckily, this trend of cake-faced makeup is changing. Um, um, there's there's, there's a, a thing where people are actually, you know, now people look on social media and they're seeing people splashing 20 different products on their face. Now there's a trend of de-influencing. 
So they're telling people, well, actually, I tried that product and it was rubbish, but I just said it because I was given it. So honesty, people are, people are looking for honesty now. They want people to really understand about things and education. People need to be educated. You can't just, running a business is very difficult. It's, it's all well and good just thinking, I'm going to set up but you need to do your research on, on everything. And I think it's, it's a tough market, it really is. You know, it's a tough, difficult market. I, I think with my business, I am working towards a passive income. So that's my next step. I'm still working on it, so I can't, I can't really divulge too much. I love the fact that you've shown up and all you're doing is giving me secrets and then go, can't talk about that. <laughs> Sorry. I know. I'm nearly there. I was, uh, it's um, strangely enough, you know, my next meeting is with my web designer, so I will get there. Um, but yeah, so creating a passive income is my next phase because I feel that, you know, working, you know, we could work ourselves into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also the other thing is I'm learning to say no. I'm so, I don't have to take every job. Yeah. I don't have to say yes to something that doesn't make me feel good about it. So there's no point me taking, you know, I'm in Reading. There's no point me taking a job that's based the other side of Kent for one person. Yep. There's no value in it. Hmm. I, I like that and I think saying no is massively underestimated especially as business owners because we think you can't say no to yeah. jobs because we need to earn money but actually sometimes like you say the the time it, it just doesn't yeah. justify it yeah 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 we 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 are afraid when you're when you're first in business you're afraid to say no mm. because you think oh if I don't say yes and and sometimes people bully you to change the price you know, they'll go, oh, but, you know, can you do it for this? Because I know someone who, someone else said they can yes. do it for this price. And, and before I'd go, okay, when I first started out, and now yeah. I think, okay, thanks for your inquiry. Um, you know, good luck with the other person. Have a great day or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, so with the industry going in, in the direction of, of more honesty and, and education, what, what opportunities is that creating for you? Like where, where are some of the, where do you need to make some changes potentially, or are you kind of on that same trend? Um, well, I'm, I'm on that trend. I am educating myself more and I'm also um, looking into other things and I've, I've started to, um, I've, I've gone on down the TikTok route, even though I, I'm not a big fan of these things, but I'm, I'm doing videos with a real, this is me. This is my face. There's no filter. I'm over, over 40. I'm not going to say exactly how. Over well. 40, we're going to leave that yeah. there. And, you know, and, and it's kind of working because yesterday somebody said, oh, my God, it's so lovely to see somebody more my age. Not that she knows how old I am, but, you know, <laughs> um, so it's that kind of stuff being real, being yeah. the real person rather than a filtered out person going, dripping a million things on my face and saying, this is me. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to educate people as well educating people about you know what you actually don't need that less is more yes less is more absolutely okay so talk me through who your inspiration is who my inspiration um my my dear friend alan waterman he's um he's uh joan collins personal makeup artist okay. i adore alan He's been a makeup artist longer than me, and he is just the same. The same train of thought. He's very gentle. His makeup is very um, natural looking. He's a really lovely person. So he's what one of my inspirations. Okay. Also, I think in terms of of branding, 
there's a, a lady, there's a, a skincare brand called Dermalogica, and that was started by a skin therapist called Jane Werwand, and she started um, out in the, the, the 80s and then in the 90s developed the brand, and then she has grown internationally, and mm -hmm. she's such an inspiration. When she speaks, you're just like, wow, I absolutely love this stuff. You know, I, I love people who are motivational and give a good speech that helps you reset your own values. Nice. It, it, it is that thing, isn't it? It's about kind of growing your values because you've heard someone else maybe push a little bit yeah. further than where, where up until that stage your mind was going. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What do you still want to achieve in the next five years? Oh, do you know, I've never really wanted to be famous, which is what a lot of people think. They want fame. I've never really wanted that. Um, I think I would, my whole aim initially was to be retired by okay. now. Okay. But I love work too much. And I think I'd, be, I'd get bored. Okay. So... My, my achievement in the next five years is to become totally passive income based because I think I can still pick and choose then. Do I want to go to work today? Yes, yeah, yeah. I can go to work, but my passive income is there constant. It's a constant in my life. Now, if you, not if, when you get that passive income yeah. just right, what would you do with that time? Travel. <laughs> what's still on your shortlist? Name me a few things that are on your shortlist. Because I know you love traveling anyway, but what's on your shortlist? Um, Jordan. Okay. Yeah, New Zealand. Uh, Peru, I'd love to do, but I think I need to get a bit fitter to achieve that one. Um, I, I want to see so much. I haven't done any of Central or South America. Right. It's definitely big on my list. And I haven't really done any of Africa either. So I'd love to do, do that too. Mmm. Because it's a short list that's kind of long. Yes. Yeah. Tra travel often is for most people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've got, I've got a, a bucket list of 75 things that I need to achieve. And I've only got ticked off 10 so far. Get on with it, Joyce. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> If you had the opportunity to go back and now meet 18-year-old Joyce, what, what would you tell her? I would tell her to believe in herself. Don't be so shy. You can speak to, to people. They, you can ask questions. And don't let people tell you what you should do with your life. Because that's it. You know, I would think, oh, my goodness, I'd love to do this. My dream was to join the army at 16. You know, I want to be in the army and then I can travel the world. Yeah, yeah. And my entire family were, no, you're not doing that. So, you know, decades later, I am traveling, but not what I wanted to do. So if you believe you can achieve something, do it. Don't listen to other people. That's what I'd be saying to her. Don't listen to other people, just do it. And it, it took me until, you know, now, when I started this career path to, it's actually, it's only, I'd say, in the last 15 years of my 26 years that I believed that Joyce Connor can do it. You know what? I love that because I think too often people think that without that belief, you can't start a business. And I see so many business owners where it kind of just comes later. Yeah. Yeah, love that. And also, I'm glad that you found it because some yeah. people actually never do. So yeah, that. okay. Got three questions to finish this off with. They're generally kind of the same ones. For for anybody who's thinking about starting a business or just about starting a business right now, what would your top two pieces of advice be? Do your research. Research the market. Fabulous. The if anyone else is doing it. And the other thing is forecast your um, profit and loss sheets just to see, you know, can I do this business? Can I afford it without borrowing too much money or if any, try not to do it. 
don't look, put your house up for your business. It's not worth it. Okay. I love those. Thank you. Um, <laughs> in what way has having a business compared to what you thought it was going to be? So how has the, the journey in these 26 years, how was that compared to what you thought it was going to be? Well, you know, I thought I'll be just going, applying makeup and that's it. You know, that was my business. But no, there's so much admin involved. You have to learn how to do invoices and, you know, bookkeeping and booking. And there's so much more to it. Yeah. Than you, you've got to. I don't particularly like admin, but I do it because then it's out of my head and out of the way. Um, yeah, th those sorts of things aren't the best sides because I'm a creative. Yeah, yeah. Knowing what you know now, would you start a business again? Yes, absolutely. Yay! I've, I've never been happier. I've never been happier until... I became self-employed. Absolutely love that. I, I can't top that answer. So I shall <laughs> nicely round it off at of that one. Thank you so much, Joyce, for, for your time and for sharing your story. There's some proper pearls of wisdom in this. Thank you so much. Uh, the link to connect up with Joyce is in uh, the comment section. So please, please reach out to her and say hi or how much you've loved this interview. Uh, thank you for watching the Business Spotlight. Until next time.